so I have seen the first big summer movie of 2024, and I have some thoughts. This is my spoiler review of The Fall Guy. To begin, I was looking forward to this one. I had been excited to see The Fall Guy for many weeks. I liked its advertising. The trailers were solid. Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt in a big budget action comedy sounded appealing to me. I liked their banter at the Oscars. I thought they were very funny and I thought they would make a great pairing for a movie like this. So going into the theater, I had very high hopes. Many people love this movie. I know it didn't do very well at the box office, but that never means anything to me. I mean, the quality of a film doesn't always equate to its box office, so I was like, whatever. And here's the thing with The Fall Guy. It has a dynamite opening shot. This long tracking shot through a building following Ryan Gosling as he's about to perform a stunt. And I was all in. I was like, okay, I'm in good hands here. I think this is going to be really great. But then after that shot is over and we move forward in time in the narrative, the film never really comes to life in a way I wanted it to. And I think the main problem with The Fall Guy is that it's trying to do too many things. It's trying to be a big budget action film which it only succeeds at here and there. It's trying to be a comedy. It's not very funny. Like it has some witty banter here and there, but it never really takes flight. It tries to be a romance movie and the fall guy completely fails on that front. As I said, I thought Gosling and Blunt were going to have some good chemistry in this, but they don't. They really don't. The Fall Guy is also very meta. It's a movie about the making of a movie. And sometimes I really like that. Usually when there's a movie within a movie, I'm kind of into it. But this time it all felt very phony and overdone. And I never really believed that the movie they were making was something anybody would really be interested in. And it's an ode, a celebration of stunt people, which I guess it kind of succeeds at here and there. But the bottom line is too many things are happening in The Fall Guy. And after about an hour, I just didn't care anymore. In a movie like this, even though there's action and comedy and romance, there are lots of things to draw you into the film, including two big movie stars in Gosling and Blunt, who have done so many extraordinary performances throughout the years. Like they both have charisma. They're both very lovely, very talented. You would think this would all come together and work, but for me, it almost never did. After that opening shot, the movie never got me to care about the story, about the characters. Gosling has some fun with his role. He is okay in this movie. There's something about Gosling that's always entertaining to watch, whether he's doing comedy or action or drama. So he is not the issue with the fall guy. Like he's doing good work, he's trying. But to be honest, I didn't find his character to be that interesting. He doesn't have much of an arc. He doesn't really change throughout the movie. He's not very funny. He doesn't have a lot of good quips. And so Gosling doesn't have much to work with overall. I was really disappointed with the use of Emily Blunt in this. I have adored her for so many years, and she's such an incredible actress. And I mean, I liked that her character starts off in the movie as a camera operator, and then she becomes a director of this big budget spectacle movie. That was cool. I like that about her character. But outside of one later scene where she's kicking some ass, where she really goes to town on somebody she thinks is not Gosling, for the most part, she's just chatting with a friend. She does karaoke for this long sequence of the movie that goes on and on. And I'm like, doesn't she have a job to do? <laughs> like, doesn't she have to be working on this movie? And by the third act of the movie, I was just waiting for her to rip. I wanted Emily Blunt's character to really do some incredible things in this story. And just not enough is done with her. And I found her character overall to be kind of a dud in this narrative. And that saddened me to no end. But you know what? She does a whole lot more than the supporting actors in this movie. They really have little to do. Aaron Taylor Johnson, I think, is such a great actor. I actually think he should have played the lead in this movie. I don't know if anyone else has said that or suggested that. 
I think he might have been a better choice for the lead of the Fall Guy. As much as I enjoyed Ryan Gosling's portrayal, there's something a little bit more dangerous about Johnson, and he's used in kind of an obvious way in this narrative. As the villain, it's a character I feel like we've seen from him before. I think using him as the lead of this movie would have been the better call. Hannah Waddingham is very fun and quirky in this, but I do think a little of her character in The Fall Guy goes a long way. And when she turns bad in the third act, it was so obvious. Like, you know that's coming. You're like, why is she playing this kind of side character, this producer? She drinks a lot of Diet Coke. She says some funny things. But I'm like, I don't think she would have signed on to this if she didn't have more to do in the third act. And so when we find out she's bad, it's like, well, duh. One of the biggest sins of this movie, I would say, is the almost non-use of Stephanie Hsu from Everything Everywhere All at Once. When I saw her name in the opening credits, I was so excited. I was like, okay, what's she going to do in this? And basically, she's in one extended chase scene where she's in this truck and Gosling's a part of it, and it's just such a one-dimensional character the screenplay does nothing with. And I'm just like, oh God, I mean, it's like, it is this thing, right, where a young actor gets their first Oscar nomination, and then they sign on for a big budget action tentpole summer movie and get like one or two scenes and nothing to do. I feel like I see that more and more lately, and it was very disappointing. Like, you have Stephanie Hsu in your movie. Do something with her. Give her an arc. Have her be part of Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Don't just bring her in for one kind of so-so scene, and then we never see her again. So that was disappointing. And speaking of that scene, it's one of the best action scenes of the movie, this car chase through many, many, many streets of this neighborhood. There's some cool stunts, some good shots. But I felt this scene was completely ruined in its editing. Just when things are getting exciting and lively, we cut to Emily Blunt at the karaoke bar talking to a friend, and we go back and forth between the chase and the chat, and the rhythm of this action scene is completely ruined. And I was like, what are we trying to do here? What's the momentum, the pacing of this scene that we're trying to achieve? Because it's not working. And I felt that way through most of The Fall Guy. I didn't think the rhythm of the comedic moments, of the action moments, ever really took flight. It felt like we were just about to get there, and then something to do with the story or another character would get in the way. And that was true even of the finale, which I felt should have been better, more dynamic. So the action scenes, the comedic moments, like the only work here and there... A big failure of this movie that I mentioned before is the romance between Gosling and Blunt. They have no romantic chemistry in this film. Maybe they would in a different kind of movie, maybe a low budget drama or something. But in this film, I don't know about you, I felt this way the whole time. They felt like brother and sister. They did not feel like a romantic pairing in any way. And so that element of the movie, which is a big part of its narrative, a big part of its ending, like didn't work for me at all. And just the muddled narrative, the lack of characterization, the kind of non-ending, like the villains of this story don't really get an ending. It's just over and the credits roll and I'm like, that's it? Like we don't even get a final moment with those two characters played by Aaron Taylor Johnson and Hannah Waddingham. And then my friend Andrew told me this week, oh no, they do have their ending. It's in the mid credit scene. <laughs> what? I'm like, well, wait a second here. There's a mid credit scene where we learn what happened to them. That should be a part of the movie. That shouldn't be a scene that we have to wait for, for minutes going through all of those shots of the stunt work that are playing over the beginning of the end credits to get a resolution to what happened to those characters? No. So this film was directed by David Leitch, who's made some high profile action movies like Deadpool 2 and Atomic Blonde and the Hobbs and Shaw movie, and most recently before The Fall Guy, he did Bullet Train. And there is a style to this guy's work I don't really respond to, I have to be honest. The only one of those movies I liked was Bullet Train. I thought that had a good energy, a good cast, 
It wasn't great, but it was pretty good. I was let down by Atomic Blonde. I know a lot of people love that movie, but I did not respond to the pacing, the structure of that film. Deadpool 2 was just kind of a shrug, Hobbs and Shaw a shrug. And so I wonder if there is something about his directing capabilities, his style, his talents that I just don't respond to because there has been this pattern of many of his movies. I go in excited. I love the actors in it and I walk out like, okay, that was fine or I didn't like that. So I guess I would say if you love this guy's movies, maybe you'll really like The Fall Guy if you haven't seen it yet. Here's the thing, I know people are adoring this movie. Many of my friends have loved it, have given it eight or nine out of 10. And it's like, how many big budget action films do we get in the summer that's not a sequel, that's not a Marvel film or something? I mean, I know The Fall Guy is based on an 80s TV show, but I just found that out recently. I had never heard of that show. So in some ways to me, it feels like an original property. And so I did want to celebrate this movie. I did not want to shit on it, but I have to be honest in my reaction. Like I went in very excited, high hopes, and I walked out shaking my head. And I was kind of like, I'm surprised so many people are liking this because I just never found a rhythm with this movie. It never made me care. It didn't make me laugh. It didn't thrill me. The romance between the two main characters falls flat on its face. And so when it's all said and done, there's very little to recommend about the fall guy, in my opinion. There are some cool stunts, some good action scenes, and amazing opening shots. I love the first minute and a half, two minutes. Great. Everything after that is kind of a fiasco. I have no desire to ever see this movie again. There is a movie in theaters right now that is incredible, that knocked my socks off, and that's Challengers. If you have not seen Challengers, go check that one out. The Fall Guy, sadly, I would not recommend. I do think this was a major missed opportunity, and I give this film a 4 out of 10. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and let me know in the comments below, what did you think of The Fall Guy? Did I go too hard on this one? We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.